being as objective as possible. Obviously, you weren't the uh, the executive producer of the documentary, but uh, you're involved <laughs> in it. So, you know, I wanted to give you the opportunity because there's a lot of differing opinions. What do you think that they got really right in the documentary? What do you think can come down to maybe a little bit of sensa sensationalism? Yeah, well, I think what they got right was a... Uh, a, a critique of the environmental movement and especially the environmental movement in the United States mm. that's long overdue. Um, they were effectively saying that environmentalists have put too much faith in um, the techno fix. You know, if, mm. we, if we just invest a bunch of money in solar panels and wind turbines, then everything will be fine. We can essentially continue living more or less as we are now, but with a, a, a clean climate conscience, right? And I think that was, that was a bubble that need, needed to be burst mm. uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, the, the, the idea of renewable energy as, uh, as a, an environmental fix uh, takes the, our attention away from overpopulation and overconsumption, which mm. the er early phases of the environmental movement really focused on, and rightly so, I believe. Uh, overpopulation and overconsumption are still root problems that we have to deal with, but a lot of environmentalists just don't talk about them anymore. The other problem with the, the techno fix is that it's not really being sold with a um, with realism, mm. uh, renewable energy can't just seamlessly replace fossil fuels uh, so that we continue living as as we currently do. And I say this having spent about a year working with uh, uh, David Fridley, who's a staff scientist at the Energy Analysis Program at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. He's a guy who really understands energy and a very technical level. And we, as I say, we spent months looking at the, the possibilities, the prices, the, 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 the technical ways of measuring different energy sources. And it's, it's a complex subject. Energy analysis is, um, is complicated, okay? And, uh, and, and so we, we looked at uh, uh, the, the problems with renewable energy, uh, having to do with intermittency, the fact that sun doesn't always shine and wind doesn't always mm. blow. How do you deal with inter intermittency? Well, with energy storage, with capacity redundancy, with, with demand management, those are the three basic ways. Each of those has costs associated with it. Then we looked at the fact that uh, renewable energy produces electricity directly, which in some ways is a very good thing because electricity is very high quality energy. And ordinarily we have to produce electricity by burning fossil fuels, which is very inefficient. We lose about 60% of the energy in the process. So all of that's very good. But the problem is we only use about 20% of our energy globally in the form of electricity. The other 80% is in transportation, agriculture, industrial processes, building, heating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So adapting electricity to meet those needs or adapting those technologies to use electricity is going to be very costly and require a lot of industrial infrastructure. So at the end of the day, you know, when we had balanced all of those things out, we could not figure out a realistic pathway to get to, you know, switching out our current energy usage levels to renewables we could, what we could do is figure out a way of reducing our overall energy consumption pretty dramatically in the wealthy industrialized countries like the United States, maybe by 80, 90 percent. Mm. And then if, we, if you do that, then you can supply that remaining 10 or 20 percent of energy using renewables that are uh, solar and wind backed up by um, hydropower, uh, uh, geothermal power, uh, possibly some other forms of uh, base load electricity production, so that the intermittency isn't as big of a problem, isn't as costly to balance out, and and you can you can have some kind of system, some kind of workable grid that way. Mm. Of course, nobody wants to hear that because what they want is is a, a 
current energy supply and more so that we can build out you know, 5G uh, communications networks that use even more electricity and, and basically support economic growth. Yeah. So our, our, our study, which we wrote up as a book, Our Renewable Future, it's available for free on the internet, it got very little notice. And compared to the, the, the film that we've been talking about, um, The Planet of the Humans, which got enormous uh, press, lots of eyeballs looking at it. Why? Mm. Because it was controversial. It was, mm. it was in your face. It, uh, it, it was defamatory, actually, towards some of the environmentalists who were talked about, like uh, Bill McKibben of 350.org. I thought the, the film was really took some cheap shots at some very good people. And I was very sad to see that. Hmm. But on the other hand, what that did was raise a huge controversy and resulted in, you know, six, eight million people looking at the film. Whereas our, hmm. our book, which was much more technical, you know, I, I can really stand behind the kinds of analysis that we did. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly how many people have read it, but it's a, it's a very, very small fraction of that. 